Good morning, good morning. Oh, hello. We're off. We're in the back streets of Moncton. How are you? I hope you're well. On way to work as well, normally, you know, as normal. We're, uh, I wanted to um, just do a, a, a video on a single issue, really, uh, which sort of might be relevant to dentistry, might not, I don't know. But uh, basically, it's about uh, know your customer. Um, and we don't have much trouble, really, in uh, dentistry because obviously. Being a medical service, you know, people more or less suggest. I don't. I don't think there's much fraud in dentistry. Um, I mean, most of the fraud that you know, or financial loss that dentists incur, uh, is through patients making appointments and they're not turning up. Or there was occasionally I have had uh, people sort of let me down financially. In the early days, there was a lot of people saying, oh, I forgot my wallet, I'll, um, I'll just nip down to the cash point or, you know, I'll drop the money in tomorrow or whatever. And um, unfortunately, there are, there are a few people that are quite adept at it, you know, uh, by which I mean that they know the old, oh, I forgot my wallet trick. And what they do is they don't necessarily actively seek out ways to, to, to practice their craft, but when an opportunity comes along to do it, they will. Um, and one of them was a guy who had a, a gold crown off me, which I'm sure is still in his mouth and working perfectly satisfactorily. And uh, he then said, oh, he, you know, he'd uh, forgotten his wallet, so I asked him if he could drop the money in. And then he didn't drop the money in, then I had to keep ringing him up saying, look, when can I expect to get this money, etc., etc." And he kept saying, la, la, la. and then eventually I said, look, I'm sorry, but, you know, I'm going to have to put in a small claim for the money because, you know, you keep saying you're going to pay, but you never do. You've had the crown. So we issued a small claim, which in those days that went to, um, it literally went to court. You know, you had like a magistrate would uh, sit up there and, and adjudicate on the claim. And uh, the patient put in a countersuit that the crown was unsatisfactory. And that's, that's why he hadn't paid. And, you know, I mean, it was clearly a load of rubbish because, you know, he, he had, I'd had many promises from him to pay and no indication at all that the crown was in any way unsatisfactory until I took him to court and when, when he put in this counterclaim. And, you will get this because a lot of your patients possibly are solicitors, you know. They'll they'll know the system, they'll know how to work the system. And when when it came to court I turned up, which again was a day off work. And people will say to you, look, you know, don't these things happen. You can you've got to try and prevent them, but don't really pursue them because you've got the situation where you're already out of pocket and uh, you're then faced with taking another day off work to um, to to uh, you know and so what you do is you tend to um, you tend to amplify your loss uh, and, and because of the chances are you don't get the money and in fact and I did get the money that was quite right because the magistrate looked at me and he said mr. Watson he says you're trying to claim money for a crown which this patient says is unsatisfactory so I'm not going to allow the claim and I'm like well you know you've only, you've only taken his word that it's unsatisfactory he hasn't really said why it's unsatisfactory he's got it in his mouth he's using it perfectly satisfactorily and I say that it was satisfactory so but the point is that the um, thing is with magistrates and in courts a lot of the time They'll try and take a middle ground, you know, they'll try and, they'll work on the basis that they'll upset both sides equally, then 
then they've done their job correctly. Uh, and uh, you should you should have a more series of pendulum arbitration where 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 both sides puts forward their best offer, and then the, the judge then chooses one of the offers in its entirety, because that encourages both sides to compromise and put put forward and not put forward an extreme position, which is likely is not likely to be chosen as the, as the compromise position. Anyway. I digress somewhat because I was talking about fraud in dentistry and that was just like a case of absolute fraud and then you've got other there are other frauds I mean I came across one recently where uh, a credit card fraud not of the type that you might think but um, we've got a card you know a merchant services terminal Hello. and uh, you, it's, t it's tap and pay, and if you uh, and it makes the same beep if the transaction's been successful or if it's failed. It's just basically saying, "Yeah, I've made a connection." It's not. It's not. It doesn't go ah, ah, if the thing's not gone through. And what you do is, if you put the card on it and the card fails, it makes a beep, and it doesn't come up with a green tick. But if, you, if the person who's doing it holds the card over the screen for long enough, all you'll do is you'll, then your attention will focus elsewhere and you'll sort of assume that the payment's gone through, whereas in fact, uh, not looking at the screen, if you looked at the screen, you'd see there's a big X on it. So that's another, and, that, and again, you know, I mean, don't underestimate these people. They do know this trick. This is a thing that, you know, they, I mean, what's going to happen? The worst case scenario, they'll, you'll say, no, I'm sorry, your card hasn't gone through. And they'll say, oh, I'll see if I can find another card or, uh, you know, my, uh, my card's in my car or I'll drop the money in tomorrow. And so, you know, it's no, it's no, uh, there's not much downside for them if they try it. And if it works there, in this case, they were 90 quid up. And if it doesn't work, then it doesn't matter, you know. Uh, and they do know this trick, uh, the sort of people who try this thing. But um, we've got the advantage of, I mean, to a certain extent, a certain amount of repeat business, isn't there? You know, you don't really go to a dentist for a one-off course of treatment. I know lots of people do. But, um, hello, there's a hang glider up there. No, uh, what are they called? A motorised parachute thing. So, um, you're, you know, you build up a relationship with your dentist and you're not going to have much of a relationship if you're constantly uh, defrauding him out of money. So defrauding dentists is not really a massive problem. Um, and that's because we have a large amount of information about our patients. We, we'll build up. Uh, there he is. Can you see him? Just to the left of that tower. Um, we build up, and you know, we've got their dates of birth, we've got their addresses for the most part, we've got their mobile phone numbers, we've got their email addresses, their names, etc. etc. Most cases, we take pictures of the patients, we've got a picture of them as well. Um, you know, so they don't really try it on too much with us. And of course, we've got our system of making them pay in advance, so uh, really that sort of knocked 95% of the fraud on the head. Um, but I'll tell you a little story about when I was a young man. Uh, it must have been, let's have a thing, 1982. So I was about 23. And I'd been qualified for a year. And I had a credit card. A uh, Barclay card. And uh, oh, I was immensely proud of it. And... Uh, in those days, in 82, credit cards were still a little bit unusual, you know. They were, I mean, people had them, but um, they were still not really mainstream, where everybody had two or three. And I went past the jewellers, and I, in the window I saw a watch, and I liked, it looked like, like the look of this watch. It was a Seconde, it was a bit, you know, one of these ones with about four or five dials on it, whatever. And I thought, I'm going to go in and use my credit card to buy this thing. Now, those of you who take cards or used to take cards will know there's a thing called a Code 10 authorization. 
and a code 10 is um, what happens is if you someone comes in your shop and tries to use a credit card and there's something you think there's something a bit funny about it if, if the card doesn't quite fit the person if it's um uh, you know if they're a bit too scruffy or in my case obviously a bit too young to, to be buying such an expensive watch and it's a high uh, risk item obviously jewelry because it's a, you know you can sell it on down the bar blah 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 and so this bloke took one look at my credit card and me and what I was buying and decided to make a code 10 call so he went out the back and they take the watch out the back so you can't run out with it and they take your card out the back so if you do run out, you run out without your card. And then, uh, but unfortunately for him, his phone was just inside the door and he was like, I'd like to make a code 10 authorization for blah, blah, blah. Now, I suppose a lot of the public wouldn't have known what a code 10 was, but because I was working in a dental surgery and we took credit cards, I knew exactly what a code 10 call was. And basically it was, he thought that I was, it was potentially fraudulent use of a credit card. Now, the reason why they make a Code 10 call is because if you don't make a Code 10 call and it turns out it's fraudulent, then you get the money clawed back. So you lose the money and you lose the watch, if you're the jeweller. Uh, but if you do make a Code 10 call and they say over the phone, they give you like a um, number, which you then wrote on the slip, because in those days it was all done with paper. And um, then if it did turn out to be fraudulent, then they won't reclaim the money because they told you that it was okay. So um, that's why he made the code 10 call. Anyway, I mean, I was I was stuck in the shop and it took about five minutes for him to get through and everything. And, you know, you can't really just say to him, not give, him, give me back my card, I'll, I'll change my mind. Because, um, you know, they're, they're told that um, if there's any, you know, that to retain the card and cut it in half if there's any problems. Um, so I just had to wait there while he made this call and then he called and then they said to him yeah yeah he's absolutely fine Mr Watson's you know the dentist he's minted he can afford it and then he came back and he sold me the watch but he was still very sort of uh, uh, what's the word he was like very sort of surly and unfriendly and um, basically didn't believe that someone like me should have a credit card and to be quite honest with you, <clears throat> at that point, I should have said, you know what? Thanks for checking, but I've changed my mind. I've, I'm not gonna get it, I'll, 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 I'll decide to change my mind. <clears throat> what I felt like doing was telling him to shove it up his ass. But there were two problems. One is I was only like 22, and I was quite like, almost like naive and, you know, not confident enough probably to do that and then the other thing was that I really wanted the watch and so you know I, I made the decision about whether or not I was prepared to put up with the uh, the, the stress of being accused indirectly of using a credit card fraudulently and um, what, what was that worth you know was it enough was getting the watch enough to overcome that sort of thing. So, but it was a close thing, and I think the reason why I've remembered it all these years is because, well, I mean, let's face it, that's off. 42 years ago now, and I can still remember standing in the in the shop. <laughs> I was so cross. Anyway, <clears throat> I got the watch, and I enjoyed the watch, and had it for a number of years. And then, nothing like that's ever happened until quite recently. When I went to, uh, decided I was going to buy a ride on mower and I went to this ride on mower shop and they were very nice. They know me down there because I'm always taking chainsaws in, getting them fixed or buy new chains and stuff like that. And uh, so they recognised me and they've had my address for, uh, on invoices for various things. And uh, I went down and they showed me this uh, ride on lawnmower and I asked them for a quote, so they sent it through. And I did. I decided that I was going to buy it. And it, I mean, I admit, it was a bit of an impulse purchase. It's not a cheap mower. And it's, um, <clears throat> it just so happened that I asked for um, increase in my credit card limit. 
and I found out <coughs> I could do it online on through my app on my phone so I got an um, increase in the credit limit on my credit card to buy this thing sufficient to buy it although I'm only buying it so I can get the credit card guaranteed and um, and then then I'm going to clear the balance off but um, and you know I mean I was having trouble with my old mower it was playing up and blah 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 and needed a new blade and everything and so it was just like all the stars aligned for me to get this thing and then uh, then uh, you know I said yeah I want to buy this thing and they said well okay you'll need to come back to the shop and make a pay a deposit and I'm like really I mean it takes me an hour to drive to the shop and back so I'd like to pay over the phone with my credit card Oh, we don't do that. Why is that? Because uh, if you come into the shop with the card and, and then you know your pin and everything, it's more secure. So we've got, we, you know, and they, they were saying other things like, oh, we've been caught out in the past like this, right? We've been caught out in the past like this, as if, you know, like by someone who tried to fraudulently use a credit card over the phone and so we don't do it now you know I mean sometimes people don't do things the way that you'd like them to do um, you can't you know I mean I've had discussions with people who would like me to run my surgery in a different way but you know I mean at the end of the day it's my surgery and I run it within the bounds of reasonableness in in the way that uh, I choose it's my business and so I can't I can't in any way say to them well you should do this you should take credit card payments over the phone all I can say is that it's going to personally cause me a lot of inconvenience no he looks you look the wrong way there mate you look left and you should have looked right because I was flashing you. So, you know, I just pointed out to him that it was going to be a pain in the ass because I'll have to drive over there, pay the deposit, they'll order it, two weeks later they'll want me to drive over again and pay for it, and then their delivery driver is then going to drive over to my house and drop it off and drive back. And it seems like an awful lot of driving that, you know, when it could be done over the phone. And they do know me, you know, it's not like I've got no history or anything. I've got, it's not like I'm no fixed to boat. So, but, you know, I can't, I've got no right to insist that they do it in a way that suits me. But, because they are alleging that I'm maybe, I may be trying to use this card fraudulently, I have got, they've invoked the same emotion that I, that the bloke in the jewelry shop invoked over the Seconda, the Seconda reflex. My initial reaction is to tell them to shove it up their asses. Because if they can't take money off of me in a convenient way, not to mention that, you know, if I pay for it on the credit card and anything goes wrong with it, the credit card company is jointly liable for any problems I have with it. So I've got quite a lot of guarantee. And it's not like they don't like taking credit cards because they will take credit cards. You know, they... they they obviously pay more in terms of um, commission on a credit card, but most people who take credit cards are resigned to that. But I do accept that if they take a cardholder not present payment over the phone, then uh, they, then they will probably pay an extra 1% on, on the transaction. So it may be that they are objecting to the increased uh, percentage they'd have to pay because I'm not there with my not there with the card you know which in the case of the mower I would come to something between 50 and 100 quid so I can see why but for 50 and 100 quid I think they ought to have a mobile credit card reader and send someone over to my house to take the payment so I've decided not to buy it you know I'm going to do to this mower company what I should have done to the jeweller. I'm going to sort of tell them to shove it up their ass. 
because I don't, you know, no, I don't need this mower. I'd like this mower, but I don't need it. I've, it's like, they never, they never sell a mower to someone who hasn't got any way of mowing their grass, do they? I mean, okay, you buy your first mower, that is true, then you, you need one, you need your first mower, but then when you buy your second mower, you've still got your first mower, and the same when you buy your third mower, you've still got your second mower. <coughs> so, I don't I hope they don't think that I need this mower, because I don't. I want it, but I don't need it. And since, uh, you know, that this has sort of motivated me to get my existing mowers fixed and new blades and stuff stuck on, and now I find that I'm I'm quite happy and the £9,700 is better in my account than it is in their account, in my opinion. So it's a it's a lose-lose situation in a way, but at the end of the day, I've got £9,700 and they've got an unsold mower. So they can't be good, because that's, that's the business they're in, isn't it? Exchanging mowers for money. And they haven't done it on this occasion. But um, anyway, if you get anything out of this, I don't know what it'll be. But I hope you do. All right. Okay. Talk to you soon. Bye.